the wonderful kind remarks of Roy Yamanu. Uh, as you are quite aware, this is the centenary of the publication of the Some Answer Questions of, of Abdul Baal, published in 1908. And uh, Dr. Ayman uh, suggested that we concentrate a little bit on the significance of this book and also the topics uh, that have been covered by Abdul Baha in that mighty volume of his uh, utterances to Clifford Barney. And because many aspects of the book have been already covered here and there, uh, we thought that it's a good idea to look at the question of interpretation as it is presented in that book, the question of interpretation, what is interpretation, and what is the historical background, and then going to narrower uh, look at the interpretation of Abdul Baha, particularly of probably the Quran, his interpretation of the Ardas, his interpretation of the Old and the New Testament, and this is a very vast topic. We can not go through all of the different aspects of the question within one hour or two hours, Therefore, I will give you some general information this, uh, in this first hour, and then we go to the interpretation as is addressed in some answered question. Uh, the question of interpretation really has been with us from the dawn of, the, of, of, of history. And uh, today is uh, getting a scientific uh, way Roya is more or less aware with this discussion because I started this in Akoto, and I'm going to repeat myself. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, this question of interpretation today is, uh, is studied under hermeneutic sciences. And hermeneutic sciences, I think, is getting uh, very important, and for the Baha'is particularly, is very, very important because it's one of the basic means for bringing people together for giving a more universal approach to the question of, of life, to the question of philosophy, to the question of theological issues, if we uh, get into the understanding of these hermeneutic uh, sciences and the techniques, and what particularly the new uh, scholars who have worked on this question of interpretation has offered us, is very, very, very useful tool at the disposal of the Baha'is for bringing together people. Because the basic problem that separates us is, is the question of interpretation. We interpret differently and we are different. And if we can have a common understanding of the interpretation, or if we value the interpretation of others as we value our interpretation, then that will be the source of mutual understanding of the religious problems, theological problems, economic problems, any problems that appear. Because the, the whole question of being is the question of interpretation. And this goes back, according to the historical study of the, of the topic, it goes back to somebody by the name Hermes. We don't know that much about Hermes, this, this great man. And particularly, I don't know about the importance of Hermes in the Christianity and, and Christian uh, and the Jewish uh, scholarship. So my knowledge is about Hermes in the uh, Islamic world and Islamic <coughs> understanding of the issue. Hermes apparently, uh, according to the Muslim sources that I'm familiar with, is, was a, a great thinker. And he is called Hermes al-Haramese. Hermes al-Haramese because apparently in the history of uh, philosophy, there are a couple of Hermeses. But one of them, which is very important in the Muslim eyes, is Hermes al Haramese, the great Hermes, or the Hermes of other Hermeses. And this man, uh, according again to the Muslim understanding, has been blessed by being a governor, by being a prophet, and by being a philosopher. So, according to the Islamic terminology, he is the Musallas al Nair. A man who was blessed with three identification or with three qualifications. Governor, 
philosopher, and also he was a prophet. And therefore, the hermeneutic or hermeneutic uh, science that is the basis for interpretation takes its name from this Hermes. Hermes is very important now for us, for the Baha'is, because Baha'u'llah refers to him. And he is probably one of just, just a few philosophers that Baha'u'llah quotes directly from his writings, and that is in the tablet of uh, wisdom. When he speaks about Plato and Aristotle uh, and other philosophers, he goes to Hermes, and then he quotes Hermes and quotes his prayer in the entire text of the Arabic language that he was at his disposal. And therefore, we see a very important link between the Baha'i uh, writings and this great philosopher, great uh, governor, great uh, prophet, Hermes. We don't know how much really he has written, how much has remained for us. But definitely, he has been quoted very, very vastly, and particularly in Islamic philosophy, he is very much admired. Uh, Hermes, al Musallas of which with these three qualifications, that is the topic of uh, 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 interpretation, had apparently started this question of uh, interpretation. What is basically coming to us, and we understand from his discussion and the development of the idea later on, is very simple. In <clears throat> any understanding, there are at least three elements. One is this little creature here, who is the right? And the second element is what he has written, he has left behind, his work. And then it comes to the third element, and these are little beings here, who look at this text and read. So in the question of interpretation, we have these basic three elements. The author, the writer, who has created something, a piece of poetry, Shakespeare with Hamlet, Mawlavi with Masnavi, Baha'u'llah with the tablet of wisdom or the Kitab of Abbas, whatever it is. And then those who deal with this. This has in it <coughs> two elements. One is the text, and the other one, can you read my poor handwriting? <coughs> text and message. Any written piece of poetry, any, piece, any article, whatever you have, there are two elements in it. One is the text, means the language, the word, the punctuation, new paragraph. Quotation marks, whatever you have in the text. That is one matter. The other matter within that text is the message that conveys the thought, the feeling, the understanding of the writer, and is expressing the text, and now is a subject to these people who look at it. Unfortunately, according to hermeneutic studies, when a writer writes a text and includes his message in the text, he is already dead. So the text kills the writer, and what <coughs> remains for these creatures here is just the text. There is no access to the author. Author is dead. And therefore, humanity is left with the text. Now, when this text is going to be read by these people, these people, this very <coughs> simple fact, that these people look at the text from their intellectual point of view. I don't write all of this. Stuff. From their intellectual 